frustration turn into elation as you turn your head to self-isolation decoration Hello there, Phil here from Paint the Town Green giving you some self-isolation decoration tips to help you keep busy during this time when we're stuck inside. So if you saw an earlier video you'd have seen me explaining how to fill cracks on a flat wall and we raked out all the cracks in this little bathroom with a screwdriver to get rid of any loose or flaking bits and now I'm going to talk to you about corking. So this is a tube of cork, it's called many things, it gets called cork, flexible filler, painter's mate, uh, but it's basically, it's a um, acrylic based flexible filler that you use on joins. I'm going to use it on these joins where the ceiling meets the wall, where two walls meet each other, and also where the window sill meets the mirror, a uh, mirror window, and the window sill meets the wall. So, first of all, we need to get into our tube of cork. They come sealed on the top like that, and you also get a nozzle like that, which needs to be cut. Okay? So, you need a sharp knife. I'm going to use a wallpaper blade, I haven't had it in my box yet. First thing we cut, always cut away from yourself. Cut the end off the tube, done, and then we're going to let screws onto there, like so, and then we're going to cut the nozzle. Now, how you cut the nozzle is very important to how skillful you can be once you actually get the thing up and running. You don't want to cut it down here, because then you're going to get a massive squirt of stuff coming out when you want to use it. This tapers down for a reason. The closer you are to the end, the more accurate you can be. I would recommend that you go pretty close to the end. You just want a thin bead coming out. You also don't want to cut straight across, because that doesn't give you so much control. So you want to cut at about a 45 degree angle there. Okay, so I'm just going to get that about there. Okay, cutting away from yourself, done. So you're at a 45 degree angle, that gives us a nice point to work with. Now we load it up into the gun. This is our gun, you release the gun with this button here at the back, and you can pull the arm out. Put our tube into the gun like so. If you don't press the button again, you can push in until it starts to connect. And then once it's connected, you use the handle there to apply pressure. Now that, that stopper is going in, pushing the end of the tube, which then pushes our filler out of the end there. I'm going to turn it around. So if you look at my gun, I've got my handle. I want my nozzle the same way as my gun. So, so my 45 degree angle is there level my hand and you'll see why in a minute why I want to do that. So I've got maximum control where everything's going. So obviously the bit of the nozzle was empty so that needs to fill up before we start to and it starts coming out at the end. So just a few little pumps of our handle until it starts to come out. And as soon as it starts to come out there, I press the button to release the pressure and we're good to go. Now the only other thing you need for this which I've prepared is a bucket and inside the bucket is a J cloth. You don't have to do it like this, but this is how I like to do it, and I'll show you why. Put a slightly warm water in there, and you constantly want to keep your fingers clean and the end of the nozzle clean. So I'm going to get rid of that little bit that came out, using the J cloth to clean off my fingers, and then we're away. So, got my gun, got my nozzle pointing downwards, the same as, I, as, as the hang of the trigger, and then we just apply a bit of pressure on the handle, and out it comes and release the pressure. Then with a wet finger, okay, we put it in the bucket, get some water. Don't use spit, you see some people doing that, but it's pretty revolting, because of course you're gonna get the stuff all over your hand, and you're putting it in your mouth, it tastes disgusting, and also there's a lot of bacteria in your spit that then goes into the, to, to, to the, to the cork or the filler, and it's not ideal, it can make, make it go moldy in the future. We then, just with one smooth action, bring our finger down where we just put the cork in, just to smooth it off, and there we are. That, once it's dried, is ready to paint. We don't need to do anything else with that. These ones around the window. So we've got this crack here where the window still meets the window. We raked that out previously. Again, I know exactly how the nozzle's pointing because it's lined up with my handle. Nice even pressure. We want to try and avoid any massive build-up because then you just can feel them off. It's not the end of the world if you get one. It takes a bit of time to get the hang of it because then what you've got to do, of course, is make it all smooth. If you've got a massive lump where it came out too quickly, you've just got to get it off. Okay. 
And that's it. We're done. That whole thing took about four or five minutes to do. As my camera operator has observed, it's enormously satisfying because you've gone from having a little area that's full of cracks and black lines that's all now filled and ready to paint. That'll take about two hours to dry completely, uh, but don't rush in to paint it again, just like with other fillers. You want to be absolutely sure they're dry properly, otherwise the paint will split on them. Uh, so next time, I'll show you how to paint over all of this.